Amen. Today's a big day uh, because it's our opportunity to give uh, in our Endeavor Christmas offering. And so uh, I want to say a few things before we move into that moment uh, where we're bringing an offering before the Lord that will help us uh, do great things for the glory of God. I've been talking about for several weeks this idea of all together. And we're talking about gathering all together and worshiping all together and praying all together and how much the Bible talks about all those kind of things, serving all together, that, that really this whole idea of church in God's eyes is a together thing. And so we do all these things together. And today I want to talk about uh, all giving together. Uh, I think you would know this if you've been around here for a while, that our, our church is committed to move forward into the future. Uh, we are on a mission. Uh, we've been given an assignment from heaven. We don't just exist to have church services on Sunday morning and have a, a feel-good time, but we're on a mission to lead people to Christ. We, we, we're here for better, uh, and we're not just on a maintenance, and so that requires something more. If, if we're just trying to maintain, it'd be one thing, but to move forward uh, to fulfill a cause and to fulfill a mission uh, requires us to lean in heavy uh, in terms of serving, praying, worshiping, giving, and we're grateful. You know, as we look back on everything that God has done, has done for us in 30 years, has done in us, has done through us, uh, we look back and we say, thank you, Jesus. Can anybody look back on their life at all and say, thank you, Jesus, for things that he's done? But, but we're looking through the windshield to where we're going, not just in the rearview mirror to where we've been. Uh, and we can't really live in the past uh, and still move into our future. And some people struggle with letting the past go. But the past is over, and you have to let it go. And, and I believe that to whom much is given, much is expected. So, uh, so we want to step into everything that God expects out of us. I love this verse of scripture from the message. Uh, Hebrews eleven twenty says this, By an act of faith, Isaac reached into the future as he blessed Jacob and Esau. Wow. By an act of faith, Isaac blessed Jacob, Isaac blessed Esau, and he reached into the future by reaching to the next generation, by reaching to those who are, who are coming along. Acts of faith today will create the future tomorrow. It's the move we make today creates the future. And Isaac reached into the future by considering the next generation. And I know the next generation can easily mean for us uh, we can look at the next generation and think it's, it's the younger people. But the truth is the next generation is who's going to be the next person to find a relationship with Jesus? Who's going to be the next person that's going to enter into God's best for their life? That's, that's the next generation. And so this, is, this, this moment for us as a church today, this is our moment to reach into the future. Uh, this is our moment to literally create our own future, and rather than just sitting back and let the future happen to us. I hope you realize by now, if, if you just let it happen to you, it's not going to take you where you want to go. You, you, you've got to make decisions and make moves and acts of faith and moves that move you forward into creating your future. So I want to read a passage of Scripture and help us understand a couple of ideas that have actually been super impactful for Suzette and I as we are considering the life of a giver. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6, it says this, I say, He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do just as he is purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that always having all sufficiency in everything, which covers pretty much 
all that could happen. You may have an abundance for every good deed. As it is written, he scattered abroad, he gave to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in everything for all liberality, which through us is producing thanksgiving to God. God, God has a plan for resourcing the ministry, for resourcing kingdom advance. That plan is called tithe and offering. That is God's plan. That is God's way. It's a beautiful plan because uh, if every person in the church actually paid tithe, the church would be abundantly resourced. But it's a beautiful thing because it involves all of us. It gives all of us an opportunity. It can break the back of stinginess. It can break the back of selfishness. It can release us from just hanging on to what we have and learn how to sow so that we can learn how to reap. And, and here's, here's what I know. When God's plan is followed Everyone wins in that scenario. Everyone wins in that scenario. Because when God's plan of tithe and offering is followed, the church wins, the, the ministry of the church wins, and the person giving wins. Because God does say, just as was quoted earlier in Malachi, if, if you'll bring your whole tithe in the storehouse to open the windows of heaven, pouring out a blessing you cannot contain. I can just say that's true. <laughs> uh, I've lived too many years doing this to know. It is true. The generosity and the giving of God's people is God's plan for resourcing his cause on the earth. So, this passage is Paul talking to the Corinthians uh, about this plan, and it gives us some key insights that I want to take a few moments and talk about today. Ideas, key ideas, concepts that can help us live the kind of life that God wants us to live. The first one idea is this. Number one is you got to have a bountiful outlook. A bountiful outlook. Some people don't have a bountiful outlook outlook on life. But here's what it says in um, uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 6. This I say, he who sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly, but he who sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. I, I've taught this like forever it, because I know it's true. God made all of life to work around the idea of sowing and reaping. That's not our idea, that's God's idea. That's God's word. So if we're gonna create a future, the future is created by the seed we sow today. Today's seed creates tomorrow's future. Galatians 6, 7 says, don't be deceived. In other words, don't kid yourself on this one. God is not mocked, whatever, if I say whatever, whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. So, so the truth is, whatever you sow, that's what you start getting back. If, if you sow love, you get love back. If you sow violence, you get violence back. If you sow peace, you get peace back. If, if you sow contention, you get contention back. If you sow to your spirit, you get spiritually strong. If you sow money, you get... That's an, an obvious thing, thank you. If, you. if you sow corn, you don't hope for tomatoes. If you sow friendliness, 
you get friends. Like if you want friends in your future, you got to sow friendliness now. If you sow mercy, you get mercy. Anybody getting the point? Whatever, whatever a man sows. So indifference, you get indifference, right? You don't get a harvest by wishing. You don't get a harvest just by praying. You get a harvest by sowing. What you sow, you reap. So if you want your future to look different than today, you got to sow something today that helps create your future tomorrow. Come on. So what you sow, you reap. But this passage, this verse, not only tells us that what we sow, but it says how we sow, we reap. The way we sow is how we reap. So if you sow sparing, you reap. Thank you. If you sow bountiful, you reap. A, a sparing mentality is built out of a, a, a thought that this, there's scarcity in the earth, there's scarcity in God, there's lack, there's smallness, so I'm afraid to let anything go because I don't have this bountiful mentality about the future, this bountiful mentality about God. Sparing mentality is holding tight, letting things just barely squeak out. The bountiful mentality is saying there's abundance, there's increase, there's more than enough. So what you sow is how you reap, but also how you sow is how you reap. And the truth is, sparing and bountiful is different for each person. Each person is going to... to be in a different place in life. Sparing sowing is what's the least I can do and get by. Bountiful sowing is what's the best I can do? What's the most generous I can do? So wherever you're at on the journey, wherever you're at in life, wherever you're at in your career, wherever you're at in your earning potential. The truth is, every one of us has we could, a sparing mentality is, what's the least I can do, and it'll be okay. A bountiful mentality goes, where I'm at in my life right now, what's the best I can do? What's the most generous thing I can do? I remember the very first time, uh, you know, wasn't raised in church, so I get saved. I'm in this little church in New Orleans, and I remember uh, one service with just, I had just started coming to church, and I never understood any of the ideas about sowing, reaping, and giving, and offering, and tithe, and all those kind of things. And I remember the first time I ever felt prompted to give 50 bucks. I was 18 years old. Uh, I, had a, I had a little job at a grocery store, and I was going to, I was, I was working 30 hours a week, and I was going to college full-time in my local town, so it's not like I have all this extra money, and I remember the first time I, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and said, I want you to give $50 on the offering. It, it might as well have been a million, I mean, at that stage, my, but for me then, $50 was bountiful. It was a big move for me. Now, if I were to just go, I'm going to give 50 bucks, it would be nothing. It would be a shame to have been a Christian for 5, 10, 20, 30 years, 40 years, and still be stuck at that sparing idea, that what's the least I can do to get by? So you've got to have a bountiful outlook. The second idea 
that is in this passage is this. Everyone can make a difference. Everyone can make a difference. So 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, each one. Everybody say each one. We've been looking at this, this, this phrase in this whole series of all together. Each one must do just as he or she has purposed in their heart, not grudgingly, not under any kind of compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. I love this idea. Each one can play a part. What I could do by myself is so small compared to what we can do together. And you might say, my part isn't very big. That, that's not even the idea. The idea is what happens when we're all giving together. Right? When, so whether you are in a place of abundance right now, or you're in a place of, of you're, you're not so much in abundance, and whether you feel rich or you feel poor, everyone, each one, can sow a seed. And you, you know what a seed is because the seed is what you have in your hand today. God won't ask you to give anything you don't have, but he may ask you to give what you do have. And, the, you know, the Bible is clear about this idea. Jesus is sitting there watching the offering take place one day, and this little widow comes up and brings the widow's might. There's a handful of pennies that she brings in to the offering, and Jesus commends her and says, she did an incredible thing. Even though she gave a little bit, bit but because it, it was significant to her, she made a difference. And for some of us, giving something that maybe feels small, but is still big to you, matters a lot to God. And some of us, if we just were to give pennies right now and there was no sense of any kind of significance, I'm making a dent in darkness. I'm making a dent for the kingdom of God. David one time was, was trying to buy a place where he could present an offering and a guy was wanting to give him that place and just say, here, take a freebie on me. And I love David's heart. 2 Samuel 24, 24, he says, I will not off, offer burnt offerings to the Lord which cost me nothing. He understood the value of, of leaning into this thing. And it wasn't just the offering itself. It was the whole bit. It was his whole heart. And what his heart wanted to do to present an offering to God. Then the third idea it, that I see in this passage that can help us is to be grace-motivated. To be grace-motivated. So, verses 7 and 8, 2 Corinthians 9, each one must do just as he is purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. God is able to make all grace, everybody say grace, abound to you. You know, it takes a while, I think, sometimes for people to get the idea, giving is not a have to, it becomes a want to. Generous giving is a part of the spiritual DNA of a child of God. God so loved the world that he gave. It is in the heart. God is a God who loves to give. And when we're born again, when we get the nature of God and if something within us starts to look beyond just our own self-maintenance and says, what can I offer? What can I do? What can I give? How can I help? How can I be here for better? And, and I love this idea because it, it, it says here that let each one set aside as he's purposed in his heart. I love on purpose giving. I'm, I'm a fan of stories of spontaneous giving. Um, 
uh, I, I experience those fairly regularly where I feel like something happens and the Holy Spirit says, give that away or do this or spontaneity. But can I just tell you that I don't just wait on spontaneity to give. Like I give, Suzette and I, it is a major part of the planning of our budget to say on purpose we are going to pay tithe, on purpose we are going to bring this offering and I think to be purposeful and intentional about our giving is a powerful thing. The fourth idea is this, is that is to have an abundance mentality. This is my, this, this, you know this is probably my favorite verse, but 2 Corinthians 9, 8. God's able to make all grace abound to you so that always having all sufficiency in everything. Honey, if I die before you, put this verse on my tombstone. I want this verse on my tombstone. Always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed. I love this verse. It tells us God is able. It tells us that grace abounds. It tells us that all sufficiency is mine. In Christ, it, it tells me in everything, it tells me that I can have an abundance for every good deed. And I think until the lights come on that God is a God of abundance and that he supplies abundantly, we'll always live in the fear that there's not enough. Because abundance realizes with God, there is more than enough. Abundance realizes more is coming. Because the whole concept of sowing and reaping is this. If you keep hanging on to your seed and you keep sowing that seed so very sparingly, you keep shrinking your future. But if you sow your seed and you whatever you want to grow and you sow bountifully, you increase your future. John 10.10 10 says the thief comes to steal, to kill, to destroy, but I've come that you might have life and that you might have it abundantly. So Jesus has come to give us an abundant life, a life of abundance. Abundance characterizes our life. Abundance is our mentality in life. You might not have been born into abundance, but guess what? You're born again. I, I was not born into a family of abundance. But when I got born again and I started renewing my mind to the word of God, I realized I was born for abundance. <laughs> God's desire for your life is for you to live in abundance. And I know there might be somebody in their head going, I wish, I wish, I wish that were true. It is true. Uh, abundance simply means more than enough. So I live in abundant peace because how can I minister peace if I'm all anxious and nervous? I live in abundant joy. I live in abundant love. I live in abundant strength. Because abundance is given to you to cause you, to free you, to be a blessing to other people. You're not bound by the restraint of trying to keep yourself together. Right? Come on, some people, their, their prayer is, God, all I need is just enough. Just, just barely enough. To get by. How small do you think that God is? How selfish is it just to pray that it would all, I would only get enough for me? Is God that limited? Is that what God's will is for my life? Just give me a cabin in the corner of glory. Come on. 
It's not God that's limited. It's us. The fifth idea that I want to talk about today is this, is that understand God supplies seed to sowers. 2 Corinthians 9.10, he who supplies seed to sowers, bread for food, he will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. If you want to give, God will supply a way. If he can get it through you, he'll get it to you. So what, you, what we can't do is let our head go to this place. I would really love to give but I can't. Stop. You got to go, God, you promised you would supply seed to sowers. I want to sow. And he will supply. The seed is what's in your hand today. And the last thing is this. Number six, God intends bountiful living. I have, I have beat this nail in western North Carolina for 30 years. And I will continue. Because I think sometimes people become Christians and their life gets smaller. But the truth is God wants it to get bigger. So I love the, the, the terminology that's in these passages of scriptures, that bountiful, abounding, abundance, supply, multiply, increase, <laughs> enriched, liberality. That's the kind of life that God's called you and I to live, a giving life is entering into a bountiful life. Amen. So we're going to receive our um, Endeavor Christmas offering. Uh, there's a couple of things that we're going to do today. We're going to kind of phase on this a little bit. Um, so what we're going to do is we've been, we've been asking our children, so whoever's moving this pulpit can come move it. Uh, we, we're, we're asking our children to get ready to receive an offer. Oh, I'm sorry. I completely forgot. My bad. Watch this video. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michael Kramer. I'm Casey Kramer. We've been coming to The Rock for about 10 years now. And our giving history has changed dramatically from the day that we set foot here to how things are now. I had come from a family that didn't tithe. I didn't even know what tithing meant when I went to church. And for me coming here, I really learned what it meant to give and that it was not an obligation, that it was something that was done out of joy and then something that was done because it was something we truly want to do. And that was so foreign and that was something that was so new to me, but it didn't come easy and it didn't come quickly. I had not been a member of a church for 27 years before we came to The Rock. And as a child, I remember getting the envelopes once a year and there was an envelope for every week and we were supposed to put money in it and then put it in the basket. No one ever told me why we were doing it. I was just told we were supposed to give. I allowed myself to fall into a cynical mindset about giving to churches simply based on a few bad actors and a few bad things that happened. I was able to get past that one season. It was around May and our endeavor was then called Kingdom Builders. So the Kingdom Builders drive was coming up and I had on my heart that I really wanted to sow into this and Casey and I both wanted to sow into this because we really believe and we really got a revelation that moving the church forward was one of the most important things we could be a part of and something that we really wanted to sow into. 
not being regular givers, we had to talk about what we were gonna give. And when we wrote a check, um, to us it was huge. Right now, it's a pretty small amount, relatively speaking, but then it was a big deal to us. And, uh, and we gave, and the great thing about that is we gave and we didn't worry about giving. And once we gave, we weren't fearful about giving. And that was probably the first time that that happened as well. And I know for me, when I first started coming to The Rock, it was easier for me to give of my time and to volunteer. That didn't feel as scary to me as giving financially. And it's amazing how the Holy Spirit started with that. And then it just kind of grew beyond that until financially. And it's kind of one of those things that you just kind of have to rip the Band-Aid off. And for me, it was easier to begin to trust and to also realize that it goes along with everything that I want to believe and live as a Christian is that it's not about me and that it's about God and none of this belongs to us anyway. And that part of me being a living testimony to God's goodness and what he's done in my life is how can I give that away and how can I share that so that I can bless others through my giving. And Michael and I have been kind of on a journey with this for a while. We've gotten to the point now where God has really spoken to us in our heart that we want to make some changes um, financially in our lives. We spent the last year praying about our lives and what our lives look like. Our son Zane is in school and he's pretty far away from where our home is. And uh, we prayed about what our direction should be. And uh, our hearts have been moved to put our house on the market, move closer to Zane's school so we have more time that we can spend as a family together. And also, so we're not so financially strapped that we're worried about how we give. We wanna be more in line biblically in how we save and how we give, as opposed to trying to figure out a plan to make it all work, where we feel like we're scraping and cutting back into that piece of the pie mentality as opposed to being plugged into the river that's flowing. And like Michael said, it wasn't a decision that came to us overnight. We literally prayed about it for a year and we're still praying about when the house is gonna get sold and what that's gonna look like for us in the next step. But we trust God and that's what it's all about. And I just encourage all of you, if you are on the fence, if you maybe feel a little something in your heart that this is something that you want to do, but you're scared, you don't know how to do it, that's okay because that's where we started. And, you know, just take it step by step. Like I said, sometimes you got to rip the Band-Aid off, but after that, it gets so much easier and you will be amazed at what you feel driven to do in your heart and how God is gonna use you so that you can bless other people for the kingdom of God. Awesome. Hey, let's take a moment to pray over this offering. If you would just close your eyes, maybe stretch your hands towards the front here. Lord, this represents our desire see your kingdom move forward on planet earth god to resource missions to resource outreach to resource this house to do and to be all that you've called us to be we take this moment we pray over this this is more than just the giving of finances father this is the giving of our heart this is the giving of our best this is the giving of our worship to you god to resource all that you want to do in the earth i'm standing in agreement right now with every person that is sowing a seed and believing god for an increase in harvest in their life father that you're giving people breakthrough god with their work you're giving people breakthrough in their families God, you're giving people breakthrough in their relationship with you, that you are giving people breakthrough into new areas of life. So Father, take this right now, we, we call it holy, we call it sacred, we call it set aside. It's for your kingdom advance in the earth, God. Use it, multiply it, God, for your glory in Jesus' name. If you can agree with me, say, Amen. Come on, let's thank the Lord. Hey, just a couple of minutes today while we're still standing. If you close your eyes, bow your heads, just a moment of prayer. 
maybe you're here today, you've never actually really surrendered your life to Jesus. I'd love to pray with you. Maybe you're here today and you know that you used to be closer to the Lord than you are today, and today would be a great day. You're, you're just drawn in your heart. I want my life in the hands of God. I want to pray with you. Or maybe you just feel unsure, but today would be a great day to get certain about where you stand with God. Nobody looking around just the last few moments of this service, but maybe the most important moments for someone in this very moment. You want to surrender to Jesus for the first time. You want to come back. You just want to know for sure you're right with God. And you say, Pastor, would you pray with me? I want you to lift your hand real high all over this room. Just lift that hand up. God bless you. Come on, anybody else, just right where you are in this moment, just lift up your hand and say, yeah, that, that's me. Would you pray for me? Anybody else want to surrender right now? God bless you. Thank you so much. Hey, let's pray a prayer together. This is for all who lifted their hands, but I love it when we all pray it together. Everybody say, Lord Jesus, I want you. I need you in my life as my Lord. I know I've sinned, I've messed up, but I come to the cross where you paid the price for my forgiveness. Today is a fresh start and a new beginning as I surrender to you. Help me become the person you created me to be. Amen. Come on, let's thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. What an awesome service today. Hey, I just want to take a moment to encourage you. If you are one of those people that just raised your hand, you're going to remember today as the pivotal moment, the day that changed your life and your eternity forever. And that is no small thing. All of heaven is rejoicing and celebrating you. And you know what? We want to celebrate you too. So we would love to know that you made that decision today. You can actually uh, take a connect card, take it out to Next Steps, tell them that you made that choice. They actually have a free Bible to help you along with your journey with Christ. Our prayer team's under the screen. They would love to meet you and pray with you about anything going on in your world. Hey guests, don't forget to take that connect card, connect card, I can't even say it, out to Next Steps as well because they would love to give you a gift for joining us today. And we will see you guys next week for Baptism Sunday.